Good morning. Good morning. This morning, uh, we have a guest with us, Pastor um, Matt Shive, who serves at um, St. Paul mm -hmm. Lutheran Church here in town, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. Um, you are the associate pastor, too. That's correct, yeah. And uh, my wife teaches at St. Paul's. That's right. What does she teach? She does our uh, 3K, 4K That's there right. at yeah. uh, St. Paul, which is wonderful. It's yeah. uh, always a joy to go in there and watch her teach and also to interact with her class as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. good. And Pastor Mac is uh, at a wedding this weekend in, um, I think he's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sam Etherton is teaching at Lutheran High. He's doing choir over there. Sure. So. sure. I invited Pastor Shive to join us this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O merciful Lord, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all. Grant us courage and strength to take up the cross and follow him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The uh, Old Testament reading for this weekend is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today. By loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his just decrees, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life, that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land of the Lord, that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them. Here ends our Old, Test Old Testament reading. The epistle is from uh, Philemon. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and to Athea, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though, I am bold enough in Christ to command to you to do what is required. Yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus. I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to me, useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep, keep him with me, in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent, in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own free will. For this, perhaps, is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, to say nothing of, of your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ, confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. Here ends our reading. And the gospel for this coming Sunday is from St. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 35. Now great crowds accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? 
Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for soil or for manure or the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be God. to God. So this year, um, for Lutheran schools, I think throughout mm-hmm. the whole country, uh, Missouri Synod Lutheran schools, um, the theme is making disciples uh, of all nations. Mm-hmm. And uh, hearing the text that Jesus speaks to us, I'm going to ask you this question okay. and set you up. Um, so you consider yourself a disciple, mm-hmm. a follower of Christ, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, have you hated your own father and mother, <laughs> your wife and your children, your brothers and your sisters, and even your own life? I think about the, uh, the words that we say in uh, the general uh, confession where I have sinned by thought, word, and deed, and I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm guilty and, there. And, and we're all guilty of that, right? Um, none of us can say that we've ultimately hated our father and our mother, our, our wife and our children, to renounce everything. I think the, I forget what the Greek word here, hate is a little strong, maybe despise Mm -hmm. um, uh, things against your family, maybe wishing ill of them. I think in in German they call that uh, Freuden, Freudenschau. Mm, Okay. It's it's wishing ill of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, But yet, how many times do we put our family before God? Right. It becomes a a first commandment issue there, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like... I think about the test with uh, with Abraham and Isaac. Yeah. You know, Abraham had wanted an, an heir, and so eventually he's he's blessed with Isaac, and yeah. then he is tested mm-hmm. on that. I mean, good things can become can become idols. Yeah, even family. Yeah, uh, or I think of it maybe in terms of when your children grow up and maybe they are living together outside oh. of of marriage, and we decide not to say anything, not to speak the truth in love mm-hmm. um, about the sixth commandment and what it sure. means for our life, or you know, hide not speak the word that we should to our children and, and then they become a god yeah. um, instead of bringing them to the lord's house right and that happens so often and then we have the world that says well you're just all hypocrites right right because <laughs> you say one thing and yet you and i do is something different right and you know i i, I like the uh, the answer our synodical president matthew harrison once made to that and he's like you know it's 100 percent true that we are hypocrites and there's always room for one more so right. come and join us on sunday yeah, uh, absolutely. So we are all hypocrites, and um, the truth is, is that we we fail each day. Uh, we don't make ourselves disciples. It's not no. in our good works or our doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we're made disciples uh, by Jesus, and um, He gave up everything for us. Yeah, He gave up His life on the cross. Right. It's it's not our cross, so to speak. It's His cross. It's it's his cross, and I, I you know I was just as listening to you made me think of you know in the catechism in the mm-hmm. third article of the creed you know the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel mm-hmm. we're we're called by the gospel and baptism you know to follow our Lord just like you were saying I mean we don't we don't have the in- ability in right. ourselves to choose Jesus you know, he's right. already chosen us in right. baptism you know, yeah. it's a wonderful thing there and so we die to him literally right I mean, uh, being a disciple and that's the first thing we do when we come into church is um, I know here at Trinity uh, we actually have kneelers we pull them down and we say. I, a poor, miserable sinner, mm-hmm. confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and I deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. Mm-hmm. And what does Jesus do to us at that point? Does he say, um, get the hell out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, no. no? And it is in his grace and love, you know, he richly forgives us. And I thought, too, about, you know, when the divine service begins, it is a service for the baptized, you mm-hmm. know. You or uh, Pastor Kretschmar or Pastor Mech, you know, we stand and we say by virtue of our office in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we're reminded that we are followers here, gathered here, and you know we're sinner saint here, <laughs> right? Uh, and we're not gonna we're not gonna hide that. We're gonna 
say back to God what he first said to us in his word. We're sinners here to And we have this, really the example of this too in that Philemon reading. It was a little bit long, but mm -hmm. interesting how Timothy um, had some problems with it. Uh, Onesimus, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Onesimus there. And, and it's amazing uh, how you see there with, um, with Paul, you know, very much seeking to imitate Christ. I mean, that's a big thing in his, in his letters. He talks about, you know, imitating me. And in verse 19, where he says, I, Paul, write this in my own hand, I will repay it. Mm -hmm. To say nothing uh, of your owing me, even your own self. So he's willing to take somebody else's debt upon himself, which is very much what Jesus does for exactly. us. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And, and when, you, when you think of the disciples too, not, not, any, not a one of the 12 were very good. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were more, they were, and I know there's a book called uh, 12 Ordinary Men or whatever, but they were worse than that. They were stinking sinners. They were. And they, they were. And I think there's a, a temptation, you know, because we've named churches after right. them. We have the saints, you know, yeah. before that. That's certainly true. But these are also sinners. And right. the Bible doesn't shy away from that. Yeah. Well, maybe you should go to your next voters meeting and see if you can change the title to Saint and Sinner. Saint, <laughs> or Saint and Sinner Saint Paul and Lutheran, sinner, say, yeah. Lutheran Church. Try that one out. <laughs> I think that's why we went with Trinity, because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we got a voters meeting coming up in a yeah. few weeks. I could give it a word. <laughs> um, yeah, so much on here, uh, on these texts. And, um, again, disciples are made by repenting of our sins and receiving his gifts on the Sabbath day. And, and um, we daily uh, fail much and, and deserve his punishment. But God, he takes it all upon himself. And instead, there's that sweet swap. The sweet swap, yeah, the the, <clears throat> the great exchange, you know, uh, we get what we don't deserve, which right. is love and mercy yeah. and forgiveness. We get an identity, you know, and that's, I think, in our day and age of, you know, we hear a lot of talk about authenticity and people are trying to figure out their own identity. But in Christ, here, I've already called you. You are mine. You are my child. And that's radically different yeah. uh, than what the world is, is offering or what people try to seek on their own. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Well, we have a hymn that talks a bit about our vocation as Christians. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's our hymn of the day, yeah. uh, 853, and um, the title of it, uh, 853, How Clear Is Our Vocation, Lord, mm -hmm. um, to live according to your word, to daily learn, to be refreshed and mm -hmm. restored by his gifts and word and sacrament. Yeah. Um, and uh, it talks about marveling at the saints who went before us and, and what they did. Um, so let's try, let's try, let's not try, let's do it. Okay. Uh, we'll sing uh, verses, how about one and um, one and four. Mm -hmm. And I have a pitch pipe here today to keep us on tune. How clear is our vocation, Lord, when once you heed your call. To live according to your word and daily learn, refresh, restored that you are Lord of all and will not let us fall. In what you give us, Lord, to do, to gather or alone. In old routines or ventures new, may we not cease to look to you that by cross upon all you endeavor done. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Shai, for being with us. It's Thank you for a, inviting me. It was a good time. Enjoy. Yeah. Have a great day. Thank you.